on August 29th, 2552, there were at least 28 surviving Spartan twos. 25 were recalled to the planet Reach for Operation Red Flag, a final ditch effort to end the now 27 year long war with the Covenant. But by next day's end, all but one were thought dead, the Spartan known as the Master Chief John 117. In an act akin to irony, at the end of the Human Covenant War when Master Chief himself was thought dead, Spartan II survivors started popping up, to say nothing of the augmentation washouts that had served the UNSC not on the front lines, but in other ways. In 2014, I put together a comprehensive list of Spartans that had survived the war. By now, it's extremely out of date, never mind the errors and omissions that found their way in there. Today, we make the first steps in updating that list. However, rather than covering all surviving Spartans, we start today by focusing on the twos, with a second video looking at the threes, ultimately leading up to a deeper discussion on something that I think you'll all enjoy, Spartan 2 Class 2. But for today, let's talk about the surviving Spartan 2s as of Halo's current setting around June of 2559, both those confirmed to be alive and a few who might still be kicking around. Starting us off, of course, is the iconic blue team, comprised of Lieutenant Junior Grade Fred 104 and Petty Officers First Class Linda 058 and Kelly 087, and led by Master Chief Petty Officer John 117. Though the composition of Spartan teams was often fluid during the war, teams being comprised and led by different Spartans as mission needs demanded, the designation of Blue Team is, and was largely, used by these four Spartans. Following the fall of Reach, John would find himself separated from the few remaining active Spartan twos, and following the end of the war, Fred, Linda, and Kelly operated under Fred's leadership, at times even serving alongside Spartan threes. When Master Chief resurfaced in July of 2557 though, Blue Team was reunited with their former leader and began taking on missions with him again. Though Fred was now an officer and outranked John, he relinquished leadership of Blue Team to John, likely due to the great respect that Fred held for him. Next up is Naomi 010, born Naomi Senska. Sometime after the end of the Human Covenant War, Naomi found her way back to UNSC space. Much of her past currently remains a mystery, and while many have theories about where she may have come from, we do know that she was among the 33 Spartan twos to have initially survived their augmentations. In 2526, she was part of Spartan Team Gold during Operation Silent Storm, one of the earliest counteroffensives against the Covenant War Machine. After the end of the war, Naomi was outfitted with one of the only suits of Mjolnir Mark VII, which featured an integrated thruster pack and a nanomachine repair suite that allowed her to customize the look of her armor. She would also be attached to Kilo 5, a covert intelligence unit with the primary goal of inciting insurrection among the Sunghili as part of an effort by the Office of Naval Intelligence to destabilize their society. The hope was that this would keep any large Sunghili threat at bay. As of 2558, Naomi continues to serve with the UNSC, though her operations are highly classified. Gray Team was crafted from the three most rebellious of the Spartan Twos, Jai 006, Adriana 111, and Mike 120. Numerous escape attempts and resistance to indoctrination convinced the program leaders to train the trio separately from their fellow Spartans. Following their successful augmentations, Gray Team would operate with minimal oversight and support, being sent deep behind enemy lines for months at a time to disrupt enemy operations. In 2535, they were present in the Madrigal system to recover nav data that had been saved following the glassing of the local colony world. During the mission, Jai-006 had the first recorded encounter with Thel Vadimi, future Supreme Commander of the Fleet of Particular Justice, and later, the Arbiter. Gray Team would continue their missions throughout the war. In 2551, they were deployed on a mission that would prevent them from being called back in time for Operation Red Flag in the following year. After Reach fell, Gray Team were deployed for Operation Sunspear. Given a giant Nova bomb, a nuclear weapon capable of destroying an entire planet, Gray Team were sent to the Sangheili colony of Gleik. The UNSC wanted the Covenant to feel what it was like to see a world disappear. Gray Team would only hear one transmission from the UNSC after that. Condition Endgame, meaning the Covenant were in the Soul System. When no more transmissions came through, Gray Team voted, and on December 31st, 2552, they detonated the Nova Bomb, destroying Gleik. Left with only a lifeboat, Gray Team were forced to enter cryosleep for the next six years. When they awoke in September of 2558, they found themselves in the middle of a conflict on Karo, a joint human Sangheili colony being attacked by a Gerald Hanai-led group. The Gerald Hanai leader, Hikabe, had found Sharkwi, a species modified by Forerunners for use against the Flood during their 300-year conflict. 
Grey Team were ultimately key in stopping the threat to Karo, and following the conflict, were readied for further deployments as Spartans do. Red Team was a name held by many Spartan teams throughout the years, but the one that most fans will recognize is the Red Team from Halo Wars 1 and 2, comprised of Jerome 092, Douglas 042, and Alice 130. These three were among those that washed out during the augmentation process, their bodies rejecting the enhancements in crippling and lethal ways. Luckily, the three were able to be cured of these effects, retrained, and even properly augmented. Sometime between 2526 and 2530, the members of Red Team were fielded as proper Spartans. In 2531, Red Team were deployed to the colony of Arcadia, along with the Spartans of Omega Team following an invasion by Covenant forces. They would end up working with the UNSC Spirit of Fire to aid in the evacuation of colonists and pushing back invading Covenant forces. When Professor Ellen Anders was kidnapped by a massive Sangheili known as the Arbiter, Red Team would join with the Spirit of Fire in pursuing her. Red Team were key in battles against alien forces on a Forerunner shield world, and were thought lost with the Spirit of Fire when the ship never returned to human space. In truth though, because the ship had sacrificed its slipspace drive to stop the Covenant from attaining a massive fleet of Forerunner ships, Red Team and the Spear crew had entered Cryo until they could be rescued. In 2559, the ship would find itself mysteriously moved outside the edges of the Milky Way galaxy over another Forerunner installation, the Ark. There, Red Team and Spirit Forces engaged a new threat known as the Banished. This conflict is ongoing at the moment, and during it, Jerome 092 would be field promoted to Acting Commander of the Spirit of Fire for his exceptional command ability. The aforementioned Omega Team was a six-person team of Spartan Twos that often worked closely with Red Team. During the Human Covenant War, Omega would be deployed to colonies under Covenant attack to reinforce local defenses and buy time for a UNSC response, aid in emergency evacuation, and deny various assets. Of Omega Team, we know of three members. Leon 011, Robert 025, and August 099. According to logs recovered from UNSC stations by Jerome on the Ark, Omega Team did survive the Covenant War, but where they are and what they're up to, he can only speculate at. Next up, we have something of an oddity among the Spartan Twos, Maria 062. She is the only Spartan Two to have retired, in her own words, to start a family. We know she was successfully augmented at some point, as she is seen testing the Mark VI Mjolnir armor that would be shipped up to John 117 on October 20th, 2552. However, why she was allowed to retire is something the community continues to debate. Though she was last seen in October of 2552, it's possible, and I'd argue even likely, that she is still around in 2559. Closing things out today are Spartan Twos that never got the chance to fight on the front lines, clad in Mjolnir armor. These are the augmentation washouts. Starting us off is Saren 019, or as she's known now, Saren Osman. She was among the washouts thought dead to her fellow Spartans. In truth though, Oni acquired her, fixed her up, and bred her to take over as Commander-in-Chief of Oni, or Sink Oni. In 2553, she would be put in charge of Kilo 5, a covert ops team meant to sow discord among the Sangheili to keep them occupied with fighting each other. By 2555, Osman was the head of Oni. When the created attacked on October 28th, 2558, Osman and Admiral Terence Hood were ferried away to a secret planet known as Rossback's World by the AI Black Box. She was sent there with a case containing the cores of several Oni AI, given the choice of what to do with them. Next we have Musa 096, or Rear Admiral Musa Ghanim. The augmentation process left him confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, for which he held a grudge against Dr. Halsey. In 2553, then-Commander Musa launched the Spartan IV program meant to augment adult volunteers rather than relying on kidnapping children. Currently, he operates as Commander-in-Chief of the Spartan Branch, or Sink Spar. After that, we have a number of augmentation washouts. Cassandra 075, who was still recovering from the side effects of her failed augmentations in 2552, noting in a letter to John 117, the Master Chief, that, quote, I'm happy to be skinned once again. Yikes. Fajad 084, who took a desk job with Oni following his failed augmentations. In 2540, he published a paper in the journal UNSC Astrophysics on slipspace physics which proved vital in then-Commander Jacob Keyes' prediction of an incoming Covenant fleet to Sigma Octanus IV in July of 2552. Finally, Kirk 018 and Rene 081, both crippled in their augmentations. Not long after the augmentations, Dr. Halsey had high hopes that both, and others, might be rehabilitated using new medical procedures. 
all in all, Halsey had rehabilitation protocols developed for 80% of the 45 washouts, with a predicted survival rate of 50%, all by June of 2525, only three months after the augmentations had taken place. And that just about does it for the confirmed active Spartan 2s, along with a few who might still be running around. There are technically others I could have mentioned, such as Joseph122 or Karis137, who were last seen in 2525 and 2520, respectively, but there isn't much else to say, at least not for the moment. I hope you enjoyed this list, so let me know in the comments below. Look forward to a similar list of active Spartan 3 personnel in the near future, but before that, a full review of Halo Renegades. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canonites.